so the, the question that Liz is asking is peri-intubation arrests. So arrests that happen near when someone is intubated. What can we do to prevent that from occurring? Before you know how you can prevent it, you need to know what is going on physiologically that causes people to be at particularly high risk for arrest. One is whatever their clinical state was that caused you to intubate them. Generally speaking, things aren't going so hot or else you probably wouldn't be intubating them, right? So there's either severe mental status changes, there's some physiologic derangement, there's a problem with oxygenation, ventilation. Something's not going splendidly well most of the time, okay? The other, the other part of that is what's going to happen to the pressures in their, their thorax, okay? So once you paralyze them, okay, and now we're forcing air into their lungs, you've decreased the amount of blood that's going to be coming into the chest. So the venous return is going down a lot. A lot of the patients that we're intubating are hypovolemic or functionally hypovolemic in one way or the other. So be it sepsis, hemorrhagic shock, severe dehydration, whatever that was that it's causing it, they don't have enough, you know, gas in the tank. So whatever is returning, they may be very dependent upon to maintain their pressure. So that's one thing going against you. You take that, that trauma patient that's functionally hypovolemic because they just spilled a few units of blood on the street, okay? Then you, you force a bunch of air in there that decreases return, and therefore you're going to have a huge decrease in your cardiac output because what was maintaining relative normal tension is now gone. So that, that's one of the big reasons is that you have to be careful of that. You also often are using induction agents if someone's not basically just already arrested. So often those will also drop the blood pressure, even though we're, we're often considering a as is something that's blood pressure neutral, very often people that are on the extreme sides of catecholamine surges to maintain their blood pressure will sometimes dip their blood pressure even though that is a blood pressure neutral agent in healthy patients. But in your sick, shocky patient, they may actually drop their blood pressure as well. So that's another issue that you have as well, so that they might be because of those drugs. Anyone who comes in and needs to be intubated has, their adrenergic tone is basically maxed out. Right? So as soon as you give them anything, they lose all of that adrenergic surge. So you're taking away all their endogenous catecholamines, and that oftentimes is the only thing that's maintaining these, their blood pressure at all. And so knowing, just knowing that you're going to drop all of that endogenous catecholamine is a, is a lot of the reason that they all of a sudden go from, you know, you push the automate and all of a sudden they're, you know, by the time you get the tube in, they're 50 over 20, even though they were... 120 over 80 when you started the procedure. And there lies the, the rub, is even if you take a normal person with a blood pressure of 120 over 80, you give them a slug of Atomidate, well, they're not fighting for their very existence. So they don't have that intrinsic pressure drip of their adrenal glands pumping out all the epinephrine they can. You're not taking away anything. So if Cyril's at 120 over 80, and I give them a bunch of Atomidine, uh, Atomidate, rather, uh, it's, it's a combination of Atomidate and Ketamine. It's a really, it's cutting edge stuff, guys. Uh, but so if I give him that drug and take that away, um, it's unlikely that he's going to dip his blood pressure. It's totally different than if I shoot Cyril in the chest, okay, he dropped a bunch of blood on the street, and now it's all he can do to maintain that blood pressure. And to exhibit that, we're actually going to do that a lot. Now, <laughs> uh, but, but what Dan's bringing up is a huge point. So how do we prevent this? Well, one is to make sure that you have appropriate volume going to the patient.